Hey everyone, it's George Coase, and thank you for joining me on the second highlight video from the three question series. And today's focus is on the idea of what makes a great principal or what makes a great administrator and why. And this is the second of the three questions. The first one is, you know, what makes a great teacher and who's a teacher that inspired you and why? Who's in the second one, who's an administrator that inspired you and why? And the third one is what advice would you give to your first year teacher self? And the reason the administrator one is so important to me is because their um, leadership is really hard. It's really tough. Uh, being a principal, you're on your own. It's very isolating. And it's not that nobody supports you. You don't have people you can reach out to. But there's only one of you in that building. It could be sometimes really isolating. And the theme that happens over and over again when I have this you know, conversation um, is that the leaders that really inspired us that really made a difference were the ones who brought out things in us that we didn't even know existed. I think I wouldn't be doing the work that I was doing if it wasn't for a principal I had named Kelly Wilkins. I've talked about her so many times and I will continuously talk about her because of the difference she made on my life professionally, which led into a huge difference in my life personally. She got me to see things that already existed in myself. And it's a different skill but it's the same as what teachers do, right? And I think it's different in the sense that this is what administrators can do, often do for adults, but it's the same kind of focus on what we want to do with our students is help them find their gifts, find their talents. And so there's a lot of con connection here. And so for me, one of the big words, one of the big focuses that I have is how do we elevate? And you'll notice that's a theme that goes out when, whenever I ask this question is, you know, the people that elevate us to something that we didn't know we could achieve. And I think a great teacher, a great leader, a great administrator does that. They, they put us in a position where we actually find our own strengths and help us see things that we didn't necessarily see in ourselves. So that's a theme that you'll hear throughout this podcast. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for being here to listen. And I encourage you, if you're an administrator, take a great listen to this because I know it's going to help you. Uh, but if you're not an administrator, I encourage you to share with your administrators because I think they'll enjoy and they can learn a ton of stuff from here too. And um, it will help everybody in education. I truly believe that we're all here to work together. And when we, we truly embrace that, when we all work together, it, it ultimately serves our kids. Thanks for being here. I hope you enjoy this episode of the podcast. Well, and so the same theme is going to hold true, which right. is, you know, what I learned in that first question is that not all teachers look the same. Right. You can have incredible teaching and learning going on, and those people can look totally different. And I learned that through administrators too, just that leaders, they don't always have to look the same. They don't always have to have that, if, whether it's charisma or, you know, it, it is just that person who truly cares. And so I've had the great fortune of having so many people that I've had the privilege to grow up under in terms of their leadership. But the one that stands out was the one that moved me from teaching to leading in terms of just that aha moment. And her name was Jamie Smith. And the thing about her is that she was like the, the accidental leader. Like she, I don't, maybe, maybe she had the lifelong plan to go into leadership, but I don't think so. She was a lifelong coach. She coached basketball mm. and man, she was beloved and she was tough. And then all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, she became uh, an assistant principal. And that was so shocking to me because I never saw her in that role. She had tremendous mm. leadership on our campus, but I never thought she'd go and be an AP. Mm. And I remember asking her one day, you know, Jamie or Coach Smith, like, what made you decide to do that? And she said, you know, Jill, it's super simple. I loved the work that I did as a classroom teacher and as a coach, but my influence was so small because it was on those kids who chose to be in my program. And I wanted to enlarge my influence. Uh -huh. And this was the way that I knew how to do that. And that really stuck with me. She went into it for all the right reasons. And that manifested in the way that she led and the way that she loved kids, the way that she kept that toughness, but, you know, put it arm in arm with care and compassion as well. Um, she showed me what leadership could look like and painted a path for me to get there. That, that's awesome. And I, and I like a, a theme that I'm noticing too, with the people that you're talking about, is those high expectations that we have for people. Mm. And I think a lot of times that to me is that how do we actually bring people up, not like try to level everything off. Right. And I think yes. that to me is such a, a, a really powerful uh, aspect of this. I, I think about this when you're talking about Jamie, by the way, Jamie Smith. The soundboard uh, is fantastic. 
this was without a question. I didn't even have to think twice about this person. And this person is Dr. Latanya Goffney. She is the superintendent of Aldine ISD. And although I've never had the pleasure of working with her, um, her inspiration and the way that she has um, mentored me and guided me through this work of, of with in administration has been invaluable. So we went, to, I went to a conference and at the time, I think I was maybe a principal at the, I think it was a principal, maybe even assistant mm -hmm. principal. And so I went to a conference, um, TASB, and um, it was a superintendent pipeline. And so it was a room full of current sitting superintendents and those aspiring to be to be superintendents. Now, I don't have a desire to be a superintendent, but I have a desire and quest for knowledge and for learning. And so I want to be in the room with those people so that I can gain broader perspective on things. Right. So I was in that session. And for whatever reason, you know, um, I would make different comments when they would ask questions. And so she came up to me. I never didn't know who she was. And she said, um, there's something inside of you. And she said, you're going to be a superintendent. You are going to be great. You are going to be a leader. And she said, you have to stay ready so that you don't have to get ready. And she said, iron sharpens mm -hmm. iron. Make sure that you surround yourself with people that are going to uplift you, that are going to propel you, that are going to encourage you to, to do what um, is inside of you. And so I didn't know this lady from, from anything. And when I tell you, um, she it she was the uh, Texas um, superintendent of the year. She is very accomplished. She is well spoken. She's a national speaker. I mean, she's just everything. And and she's not too busy to check in. Every time I see her at a conference, she's like, "How are you doing? What's going on? Where are you?" You know, she's constantly checking in to see, you know, how am I doing and where am I on the journey. And and most importantly, she offers, "What can I do to help?" Now, this lady is like so busy, so big, like an icon, a legend, but yet she takes the time to say, mm -hmm. I'm still going to invest in you. I'm going to stop what I'm doing to check in to see if you're okay. And I'm just inspired by her leadership, her servitude. She's a servant leader. Um, she makes people, like you said, feel valuable and comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I, Dr. Goffney, I love appreciate you and I will always honor who you are. And if there's anything I can do to help you, just call me. Dr. Goffney, do you know this, Therese? I don't know if you know this. Two things. Dr. Goffney was actually my uh, first guest this season. Really? And she, she's incredible. But you don't know this. You don't know this. And now, and you just actually did something really helpful, not only to Dr. Goffney, but me. Dr. Goffney is actually writing her first book with Impress. So her name is Anne McCarty, and she was my very first principal ever in my first teaching job. Um, it was awesome. She acted like a mentor to me and really cared personally for me and, and interested in me and my success. Um, and she saw something in me that she really um, wanted to elaborate and extend on because after the first couple years, she asked me to fill a completely new role that mm -hmm. I had no intention on, on doing. Mm -hmm. um, it was a technology teacher and I was a math and science teacher. And she noticed that I used technology so effectively in the classroom. Mm -hmm. She said, hey, we have this vacancy. I know it's outside of your skill set and your comfort zone, but I would really see if you'd be interested in, in taking this career in technology education job at our school. So I was like, okay, let me think about it. And so I decided to say yes. I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. My school needs me. I'm going to step outside my comfort zone and, and teach a, a new subject that I've never done before. So that entire summer, I had to study for the Praxis II in career and technology education. Mm -hmm. um, I, I barely passed by like one or two questions, um, but that's all that mattered. You know, right. I, I never took one it's technology passed. class in college and all of a sudden I'm cramming, you know, for like two <laughs> or three months. And so I barely pass and I end up teaching myself, you know, all these different skills and tools and, um, you know, different ways of learning, which was super fun. Um, and then the very next year after I like hmm. did a really good job teaching, she said, hey, we have an instructional technology coach hmm. position that is vacant and I think you'd be perfect for the job. And so again, I said, 
sure, why not? You know, and and I filled this role, and that's what really led me to to where I am today because she saw so much potential in me, right. and she cared personally and knew that I would be able to do well in almost any other role. And I'm just glad that I said yes because I learned so much and gained so much from it. And um, she just really believed in me and and created lots of opportunities um, to help me get to where I am today. Well, Anne McCarty, if you're listening, shout out, yeah. shout out. So that, that when you're when I'm listening to that story, the the big takeaway for me is really I think great leaders lead people up, right? Not yep. like they're they're not necessarily sure they could do something, but they put them in a position where they have to like still grow. And like I I've talked about this a lot of times, and I think I I, I always struggle with this because um, we always you know or I shouldn't say always, but a lot of times in in administration and education we spend. Uh, 90% of our time with 10% of maybe some of the issues that we deal with. Right. And like, you know, our, maybe some of our staff that's struggling and, you know, maybe some of the staff that's like, doesn't like you. Right. And we can do this. And I think what happens a lot of times is that our staff that do really well or have great potential, they, they a lot of times they, they want mentorship. They want to grow and they either, outgrow you and leave or they stay in and they become stagnant and i think a lot of times they just they, they want attention it's not that right you know, but they're like hey they're just fine and i think part of it too is kind of putting in people in positions where they might be a little bit uncomfortable where it's it's like you maybe even as a minister saying like i believe you can do this i'm not sure but i believe you can if you you know put this and i think kind of it's kind of the idea of leading up and so i, I just love, I love that, that idea because, yeah because it is really about um, I, I think a lot of times we have so many people who are just really great in the profession who leave because they're not getting support. They're not getting mentorship, right? That they're just getting permission to do stuff. Right. And we talked about that before the podcast. Right. Uh, and then we're just like, you know what, I'm, I'm not growing here. So I'm going to go somewhere where I can. And, uh, it, it's a great loss. I think, you know, we want to, you know, we, we want to get, ensure that people get the positions in, in the world that they really love, but we want to really develop great people. Um, so mine is actually from my teaching career. And I would have to say I had a principal named Matt Warnock. Um, and I don't, I'm not even sure. I don't think he's a principal anymore, but he was really wonderful. And that he just let his teachers um, like be who they needed to be. Like we would come to him and would say, Hey, this benchmark feels, you know, like, you know, totally, um, you know, not necessary. And we want to do this instead. Or we really feel like we need to go out into the community and deliver books door to door. And he would be like, Let's make it happen. What can we do to make it happen? And I just, I mean, I feel like it made all of the teachers better because we were able to blossom into these, you know, teachers that we are now and like be experimental. You know, it was great for the community. It was great for the kids. And I mean, if I were to ever, which I, you have not convinced me, if I were to ever be an administrator, that's exactly the type of administrator that I want to be. Somebody just empowers like the teachers and the kids and kind of gets out of the way sometimes. So no offense, sorry. Timer. Yeah, no, I, no I, th I think that's I think that's actually quite important. There's um, uh, it's basically I think it's like Steve Jobs is a tribute to this quote is mm -hmm. is like my job is to like hire really great people and then kind of get out of their way. Like that's why you actually yeah. hire really great people. And there's a there's a meme that I used to share. It's all over the internet, and it was it was talking about basically uh internet filters and like how basically so much was like blocked off from classrooms and like yeah. teachers could use youtube and stuff like that now i know like a lot of that has changed there's some still stuff that's probably still yeah. blocked in many schools and it was like it just said dear teachers we trust you with children but not the internet side yeah. <laughs> right and exactly kind of, it. right and it's kind of like funny to say like hey we trust you with you know kids that are precious but like you gotta do this gotta do this gotta do this mm -hmm. and that micromanaging doesn't actually and to be honest, you what I think a lot of times when it leads to is the micromanaging of the kids. Oh, right? absolutely. So and it takes a lot of the professionalism out of the job. Like I'm actually pretty good at what I do. It's a science. Right. We've learned how to do this. Trust me to do it. So then I've worked at places where they had a big old lock on the supply cabinet because I can't be trusted with <laughs> file folders, I guess, you know. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah. Much less the internet. So you know. no, we actually when you said that, we got um I remember years ago we got a smart board. And I know it's oh, like, yeah. you know, we got a smart board and basically I remember asking to use it. And it's like, you can't use it. I'm like, <laughs> why did we get it? And they're like, you know what this thing costs? I'm like, yeah. I, okay, I get that. But if it costs a bunch of money and we don't want to use it because we're so worried about breaking it, maybe mm -hmm. we should have bought it. 
Like, yeah. what's the point? So, so it was, uh, what's the name again? Because I got to do the shout horn. Oh, Matt Warnock. Yeah. Matt Warnock, mm-hmm. if you're listening. All right. And maybe Abby will be f- following your footsteps one day. And we'll, 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 when that happens, uh, you promise you can come back on the podcast. And this is going to be I called, will. I'll be like, George, you, you told you me. You were so. right. That's the, I'm gonna, I already got the, title <laughs> the, the podcast. So, uh, right now, this really sounds like a bad answer. I'm going to go with my boss, my superintendent, Pat Atkins. Why is that a bad answer? Because <laughs> it's, it's a suck-up it, answer. Yeah, it, it, sound, it sounds like right. it. But I'll tell you why. Um, for 26 years, I was in the classroom, and I think there is a moat being dug between mm-hmm. uh, teachers and administrators. And I think that that moat is being dug everywhere. You know, like a moat around a right. Oh, yeah. right? Um, and the way that that moat gets filled in is with every conversation that we have. And I know I was guilty as a teacher. I did not understand the roles and, and how helpful administrators were to a teacher. I never invested the time to understand that. I only looked at it from my point of view. Right. And now um, I'm not an evaluator of, of educators, which I love, but I see how hard administrators work. And I see, you know, I wrote a book on leadership, along came a leader, but I never had an administrative role, right? And uh, mm-hmm. I need to do a follow-up to that because now it's easy to it's easy to make commentary about, you know, what principals do and what superintendents do and what curriculum mm-hmm. directors do and things like that until you've had to try to, to work and lead professional learning. Uh, with a group of teachers and and you've had to try to uh, uh, start a new initiative and you know there it's difficult and it is you've often probably heard that administration is lonely the thing i like about my current boss pat atkins is he has a really uh, team approach to things he likes to surround himself with others he really listens to the voices of other people and he really gets into the classrooms and has those conversations with teachers and other administrators and he doesn't act as the sole i'm the mm-hmm. leader of the whole district kind of approach uh, he approaches everything with a team concept and that's that's something i really admire about him and i think I, it, the, to the teachers listening to your podcast right now have some empathy for administrators and try to view what their what their roles and responsibilities are in the district and when you judge something as like ah, they're just creating more problems for me try to look at it a little bit bigger and say you know what what are they really trying to do because they're not right. we're all on the same team and so uh, that's that's my answer. Yeah. Let's give it Pat Atkinson. A shout out. This is going to kind of probably be a little bit out of the box, but I um I am a principal's kid. So um, my mom was an elementary principal. My dad was a middle school, junior high assistant principal. So actually, I had them as students. So there's nothing worse than being your junior high self. And you're trying to be cool. You're trying to be your cool self. And your dad is the assistant principal. That is like the worst feeling ever. It's like, no wonder I'm probably like traumatized and scarred for life. (laughs) I got to ask you, did you say, did you say, did you reference him as dad when he's assistant principal? Yes, I did. Because, well, I really tried not to reference him at all. I tried to please, (laughs) like, you know, do not come near me. Like, Middle school, junior high, lunch, don't come speak to me. We really don't need to have a connection. Uh, but he did anyway. So, I mean, it's just, you know, that's okay. But um, I would say kind of... <laughs> love that. I love that. It's a whole that. other story. But I would say that my... my, my um, but my my administrative style, I would say, is kind of a cross between my mom and my dad. And so they're really, they have just interesting personalities. So if you can imagine, my mom is a little lady. Uh, I wish I could throw a picture so you could just kind of sit, because I'm a little person too. I'm only 5'1", but my mom is about 4'11". So she always wore high heels growing up and everything and just was kind of, you know, just straight right. by the book. So on the flip side, my dad was like 6'1". And so he was 6'1", you know, and imposing at, at that time, not now, but, you know, mm-hmm. 35 years ago, walk into a room. That's kind of a big person, right. uh, but had a very kind of teddy bear sort of like personality. So I say <laughs> as a human being, I'm a pit bull teddy bear mix. And so... <laughs> 
because right. my mom was the pit bull. My dad is the teddy bear. I mean, it's just it's just just kind of the way that it was. But anyway, so I say I'm a mix uh, between that. But I think kind of a lot of things that I've learned administratively and that I think about and I carry with me every day are crossed between things that that mm. they did. So my dad was truly about the relationship like he felt like. I'm going to build relationships with kids. I'm going to build relationships with adults. And, and he never used that word in terms of, you know, like now we talk about building relationships. Like I try and coach people, you know, you got to build a relationship before you, um, before you get anyone to do anything. Right. Uh, and so my dad was just kind of the master, I think at that, at building relationships and just never, um, you know, always stressed to me the importance of building relationships with everybody, that there was never anybody that you you wouldn't just try and build a relationship with in the workplace and that that was very important. So he he was teaching me that as a kid, which I thought, OK, that's that's something that I carry with me today. Um, and my mom is, is, is just, you know, I think her lesson, and I don't think it, but it's always about doing what's right. And so sometimes, you know, she will she will ask me, you know, sometimes she's my sounding board because I'm not married. So I've got to have somebody to sound off on some of these things when I can't sound off at work. And, you know, she will say, well, is that decision, did that benefit the kids? Or did you do that decision because it was easy for you? Or, you know, what motivated you to make the decision that you did? And so I I do take that uh, along with me that, you know, some decisions are very unpopular, but I'm trying not to think about what works for the moment or what's necessarily popular, but that, you know, six months down the road, six years down the road, is there an implication from that that is going to be negative for a child? And I don't want that to happen. I I could not. I love this so much. And just wait, we got to give a little shout out. <laughs> That's awesome. One of the one of the um, best superintendents I ever worked for is that like I've never like is exactly what you described, but I never thought I've never thought of this person. <laughs> okay. yes. And she was like she was, and I love this because she was very visionary. Mm -hmm. um, she's very, and I always I'm like, look, do not get on her bad side. I just yes. <laughs> do not get on the bad if side. Yes. But if you're on her good side. It was amazing. It was, it was amazing. And, and she, and she, it wasn't like, she didn't go looking to like get you on her bad side. Like if you, mm -hmm. if she felt you were messing up with the future of kids, you would know she would make sure that would be straightened out real quick. Right. And I just, right. and I appreciate that about her. Um, and it really was something that really mattered to me. And I think one of the things that you said really kind of regards to your mom, I think a lot of times, um, when we're making decisions in education, it's really easy to do what you said is what's popular right now and actually could actually like make us look good right now. Right now. But long term, it can actually hurt the kids. kids and sometimes the decisions we're making and there's so many facets of life that this is true in and we won't go mm -hmm. into them, but I'm sure people can figure this out where he's like, say, hey, this make us look good right now. Right. But long term, it can actually hurt people. And that's, you know, something that's reality. So I love I love I love that mix. I love that mix. I think it is so important, too. Right. Because like yes. you and I were talking before uh, for me, when when I had to make a tough decision, th the thing I always try to do is get your ego out the way. What is best for kids? And then yes. if it's hard, you will be able to sleep at night. That, yes. <laughs> we'll sleep at night. But if it was about your ego and you're like wrestling around. You might have done this for the wrong reason. reason. Right. Yeah. That's exactly so I love right. 